Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of TerraTech. Absolutely loving this game at the moment. Seems like a lot of you are loving it as well. Magical Rock appearing out of nowhere. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, want to say thank you for all of the feedback on the previous video. It's really great to find a series that I'm, you know, really enjoying and uh, you guys are all enjoying as well. In fact, that's happened quite a lot recently with the different games that we've been playing besides Minecraft. Um, but yes, today is going to be a fun episode. I've got something that I want to do, which is redesigning our harvester tech. After we've done that, I'll do a little bit of harvesting resources and move on to something else that I've got planned. And in the meantime, while I'm redesigning this thing, I wanted to talk to you guys about what's happening with the game, because this is an alpha game, and uh, we're going to pull out our little tech here for a second and drive him around. <laughs> it looks so cool when it's on its own like that. Uh, yeah, this is an alpha game, which means that um, you know things can happen, it's in development, and one of those things is that the save game data is going to be reset. If you update to a future version of this game, it's very likely that you won't be able to keep your save data, which means we are going to lose this world one way or another. And you might be thinking, sad face, oh no, that's bad. I think we should look at it in a positive way. What we're going to do is for this episode and the next two, I'm not going to update. I'm going to, uh, to play this and do a few more things that I really wanted to do in this world. And then we're going to, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for a block. Then we're going to move on and start a new world. But what I'm thinking is that if we get ahead of ourselves, I record a couple of episodes back to back for you guys. Um, then when we go to that new world, what I'll do is I'll live stream it during the week. And, uh, and we can get ourselves up to where we are now. So when we come back to the game, we'll have all of this you know, awesome stuff already here waiting for us to go again. Which I think is a really cool plan. Um, so yeah, I will be recording this episode and the next two after it and then by the time all of those are out the next update would have been out I would have been live streaming over on twitch.tv slash Asuma there'll be a link to that in the description box be sure of course um, to go and check out the link and follow me on Twitch if you're interested in those live streams and if all goes to plan we'll be live streaming ourselves some TerraTech which should be really cool and now that I build this I am starting to think this thing might be a little bit slow initially I wanted to make it so that using this setup right here was going to be faster and uh, to mess around with that idea, I've got an idea. <laughs> and that's right, we only had the two refineries on there. What if we put them at this height? I don't know if they're going to like interact strange, like this might send items there. I don't think it will. Uh, but can we use the receiver pad there? That's not what it's called, is it? Is it called a receiver pad? It's a receiver, and it looks like a pad. I think that's fair. <laughs> uh, we'll go and drag this thing over here. Yeah, let's put four delivery cannons on this thing. We want to get, you know, as much as quick as possible. That was the initial plan. Um, I've also just realized that we can't put those things there. <laughs> Let me explain. We need some drills on this thing, right? So maybe that's not going to work. We want to pick these things up fast. Uh, maybe we should be using the old uh, <laughs> conveyor to store some items then. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, what I wanted to do is a little bit of this like designing on camera together because it does take some time. As you can see, I'm going to be thinking about stuff a lot. Um, so we'll try and do that at the beginning of this video. But I'm going to make some cuts as I just sort of stare at it, think things over, you know, figure out what's going on here. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of testing with these blocks and seeing how the uh, pads pick them up. One thing I wanted to mention, <laughs> look at that. It looks like things are blowing up, right? You can't actually damage your own stuff. You see, they're in the healing bubble, so we would have seen them go red, and then we would have seen them get healed again. And that is really cool, actually. When I've been fighting, I've been sort of cautiously avoiding this area, which is something we don't actually have to do. Anyway, these blocks are going to be useful, because I want to see, like, what's the pickup range of these? Because I want to put in some drills. Where are my drills at? we got two over here, and I wanted to have them all sort of plastered above this top area. So if we have our pad here, then it might be able to pick up what's down below, uh, but it might also be able to pick it up if it's over to the sides as well. So we want things to be destroyed, you know, get pushed along by this as our pads pick them up. That was my initial thinking. Might not be the best way to do things. So that thing picked it up with no problem at all. What about if we remove this, put that there, <laughs> put a wheel here. This is going to temporary. And let's remove the other ones because we're doing testing. What happens if you're there? What if you're in the middle? Okay, it can get it from the middle. That's promising to me. I think what we should do is have two pads on either side. This thing is then also going to be rather wide and heavy. Um, so how's it going to do when it comes to moving around? Let's grab a few more blocks here. Uh, that's the kind of block that I want right there. So we can put the wheels a little further back. And yes, this isn't like a perfect test. But if I put down, let's say, six wheels on this thing, that should be pretty reasonable. 
And can we move around easily? It looks like when we're wide, steering might be a little bit awkward. So it's not actually that bad. I think we might get away with this. It is going to be one block wider. Um, and now it's caught on the ground. If we have another wheel sort of like in the middle area, will that help stabilize it and keep it off of the ground? Doesn't look like it, does it? That's not really helping at all. We're sort of stuck now. So maybe actually going for this wide design might not be the best. Like I'm thinking a big scoop. Then again, it does seem to be okay with moving around. But we can see clearly there's pressure on these wheels and we're struggling in particular places. So maybe this wide design isn't the way to go, actually. Okay, this thing is starting to look seriously cool now. I like it a lot. Just attach loads of lights. We use two of those strip light type things, or they call buzz something. Buzz strip light. <laughs> not bad. Me and remembering things is pretty terrible. I'm, uh, I'm not great at spelling words and remembering stuff like that. And being introduced to loads and loads of new ones all at once can be a little bit overwhelming. But we're doing good so far. <laughs> I'm remembering things. And yeah, this is a really top heavy design, right? And I'm a little bit worried that it might be too much. It may just be a case of too many delivery cannons. Um, is a bit much for it, but they're all sort of in one place. However, this right here, this setup with five of these pads, picks up everything that lands um, down the bottom here, which is seriously cool. So if we give this thing a test, you can see we do have some missiles, or, uh, sorry, lasers? No, missiles. Line of sight blocked. They're not actually shooting. Normally, I guess if they track an enemy, they're going to sort of shoot up into the sky. Um, otherwise, when we press space, I guess then the only thing that works is the drill, and this is quite promising. We're just going along in a straight line, and I'm hoping that everything in front of it will get destroyed. Trees are probably going to be the best test. They're going to you know, drop a lot of items. You can see here, you've got to position it a little bit because of the upward slope. And what might be a good idea is actually having the drill sort of out by one more block. That might help a lot, actually. But then again, it also puts more weight on the front of this thing. Right, and that is not working at all. Look at that. We just can't get into that one. That's fine. Let's do some more testing here. I like this vehicle. Uh, it feels a little bit clumsy to manoeuvre, and I think it's going to be difficult to uh, to get it working any better without, um, you know, some some better tech, which we can actually get by finding some of the other tech types. This is, of course, just the GSO tech. So what's happening here? Right, look at this. You see, this one's now kind of tricky to get to because of the angle we approach it at. So maybe having some uh, lasers at the front there isn't always a bad thing. Uh, but I'm hoping what we can do as the end result is just hold down spacebar, basically, and, and mash our way through everything. So I think extending um, those forward is going to be a really good idea. So why can't I go further forward here? Hmm, interesting. Maybe we need some wheels out on the side here to keep this thing slightly raised because you can see here, look going right into it and considering where these pads are and the way we're trying to use this thing which is to just mash up everything as we go along that thing kind of feels like it's not useful although if we get this design right and we're going through and just taking out tree after tree um, then I imagine some drops will actually just end up on the ground and it becomes quite useful so now we're stuck which is not promising I guess and I think the strategy here is to uh, reposition those drills and uh, and add some more wheels at the front Okay, this is what I'm talking about, just going around and mashing things out. And uh, I wanted to keep that going, really, because we were starting to get a lot of items up the top. I think each of the pads hold three each. And look at this, a lot of pads mean they just go straight up there. And I'm wondering, with this being such a, like, a heavy design at the front, which causes us some mobility issues, if perhaps the thing to focus on is just having lots of pads, you know? If we were to rearrange this a little bit, and um, we could possibly make it so a few more pads appear here. But it is working really well. It's holding a lot of materials. I'm hoping to go for a run here that's going to stretch it a little bit and see if the plow at the front comes into play. As for extending these wheels on the side, it should be pretty obvious what we've done here. Um, you can see everything's sort of been pushed forward and in front of this. It really feels like it's doing nothing. Uh, everything just gets picked up up top. And uh, I don't think it's made it that much better, but it's definitely helped, so that's a good thing. Anyway, I'm going to go around and just use this thing for a while now and see what happens. I'm hoping um, to get enough materials on the ground that the plow at the front comes into effect, and then we can see if it's really worthwhile, because otherwise, it feels like the trick here is just to have lots of pads on this thing. It's got a nice pickup range, and, uh, and that way we can just continuously plow through things and make sure everything gets picked up straight away. Alright, I think I'm done with my testing. I've got to say this plough has not come into use once. The pads up the top here pick things up so fast 
feels like it's not really necessary. I guess just the fact that it's in the game makes you feel like uh, maybe there's a good way to use that. And look at all this money we're getting as well. This is awesome. We just want to speed up that process a little bit, I think, should be our aim. So we're going to try and build um, a, a building, <laughs> a tech that could uh, do that for us. So I'm thinking we need to slimline this a little bit um, and distribute the weight evenly throughout. So I'm thinking at the front what we could do is have three pads and then have a refinery and a delivery cannon and, and then uh, delivery cannons on either side. No, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not actually sure what it was I had in my mind. I guess probably as I build it, um, it'll all sort of come into place. So I'm going to rebuild this thing now. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I'll do a little jump cut and I'll show you a new design. Now this little setup right here is awesome. Let's drive into this stuff. This is my favorite little patch for collecting materials. It's going to work well with this machine. You can see it's a lot more zippy, although you can't quite see that when we're just plowing into some rocks or something. But it moves around really good. It gets around the terrain. It's faster. Seems a little bit more agile, which is cool. And I just tried to expand the amount of pads that we could have attached to this thing by using the thimble pads. And unfortunately, um, they don't quite work the way I would like. Look at how much money we're getting from this little patch. I love it. It takes a long time to respawn, uh, but every time it does, we come straight over here. Look at that. It's able to hold everything. It's great. I think it can hold 15 items at the front because each one of these holds three, like this one on the side here. Um, so when one's full, the other ones will just pick them off. And what I'd really like is to have some more pads on the side because sometimes they're full when you go past them and you have to reverse and pick up an item again. So it'd be nice to be able to pick them as we're making uh, our way sort of out of the area. Uh, anyway, what I tried to do was to use the thimble pads. If you remember the problem that we had before, is that when we attach one of these to the refinery, or at least in front of it, so that could be either a thimble or a conveyor like this, what will happen is the items will go in and sometimes, more often than not, come back out again. I don't know if that's going to be the same with a conveyor behind it, because it kind of acts like a buffer. So that's something to consider, because uh, then these can hold items before they go into the delivery cannon. But anyway, I had these attached to the side here, and they basically took the items back out of the refineries, so they kind of backed up, which meant we can't really use these in this setup, and if we are to use the conveyors, um, they're quite expensive. So one more thing that we might try is to add a conveyor on the side here, and that means we could put another pad at the front, behind, and over here to the side. But the way I see it, I'm going around and harvesting stuff with this, and it doesn't feel like there's actually any more need um, for this thing to be beefed up at all. Now if we get better tech later in the game that means we can move faster or do more things um, then maybe there'll be a need to redesign this but for now I think that this is the one. I think this is the ultimate um, little harvesting machine because we literally just go around blitzing our way through here. I think the only problem really is is sometimes when there's blocks on the side and you fall and they roll down the hill or something like that but otherwise all we've got to do is drive around and plow into stuff and uh, and we do a great job collecting everything. Look at this. <laughs> Portable money maker. That's what I'm going to call this thing. So yeah, that was uh, a pretty successful idea, I think. And look, we're approaching 50,000 now. And here's the problem that I was talking about. We've reached our capacity um, when things on the side are full. So you have to kind of maneuver around to pick up the last bits and bobs. So there probably is room for uh, more pads on there. And maybe we'll try that again. Something I can do in between episodes. For now, we're going to move on to something else because we spent... Quite a lot of time redesigning our harvester, but now it's going to be awesome for the future. And uh, what I want to do next is fight some more some more bad guys with our new tech over here, which we didn't really fully take advantage of. He's now got the shield and uh, the healing bubble as well, so he's pretty much going to be unstoppable. However, I did get a little bit of advice that I thought was quite important. I'm not going to be entirely be entirely entirely be. I don't know what I was trying to say there. <laughs> entirely suitable for what we have right now. This battery apparently explodes, so if it takes damage, um, it can blow up, and it's like a chain reaction. It's going to affect a lot of the other blocks around it. So it'd be a good idea for us to sort of encase it and make it safe. So I think what we want to do is redesign this thing, make it free wide, and have this thing sit in the very middle of the vehicle, and uh, and then it will be protected from everything else. So how much charge my battery actually has, we can't tell because it's hidden away in the middle there. And yes, I've got a new friend, we'll get to that in a second. Let's check out the redesign of this thing. We've got our coil lasers at the bottom. Oh sorry, they're not coil, these are coil, those are stud lasers. We've got our three pound cannons right here. We've got the mortars on the side at the back and some of these guys facing out to the side as well. Also got the little machine gun turret 
um, sticking on the side facing upwards. So some of these, they uh, they home in on the enemies, like these ones down here. I'm hoping the mortars do too, because they kind of fire off to the side. And I can't remember if I mentioned that before. Uh, this doesn't actually hurt anything, does it? Which is pretty cool. Um, so this thing's going to do a serious amount of damage. But the reason that we got these facing out to the side is because in the previous episode where we were fighting some bad guys, I was talking about how um, as we're turning, they're turning around us and we can't quite get our weapons to face them. Well, we've got some that shoot out to the side, and I don't think they're going to be terribly effective, uh, but hopefully they can do something. So over here we have this little... I'm going to call him Sausage Dog, <laughs> uh, who looks a little bit awkward, and that's because he is a new little AI that I've got to follow me, and he's having a bad time manoeuvring around, so we're going to try and help him out. You are set to follow, right? Let's have a look. Uh, aren't I supposed to just right-click on this? Or am I supposed to be? I think I'm supposed to be something else, and then right-click on it, and set it to follow. There we go. And are you going to come with me? I'm going to, I'm going to manoeuvre it out of there. Let's click on it bring it out like this. So this was a suggestion from you guys to have a little um, fella like this follow us around while we go out and fight and uh, and then when we get some like new stuff we can attach it to this guy to bring it back but he might get hurt and we're just gonna find out what's gonna happen. So let's set him to follow again. Come on follow me. There we go. Maybe by clicking on follow once it already was it meant um, that it would then not follow me, i.e. stay still, which is useful to know. Don't know if that's exactly what was going on. We're going to head over there because we've got an invader, but I think we'll take a detour and uh, and go over this way to the desert and hopefully find some different techs to fight as well. A lot of you have been telling me um, that we find the higher tech stuff out here in the desert, which I have seen before. Um, so we've got something over here. Let's just start firing right about now. Try and line ourselves up, and I don't think he had a chance. Didn't have a chance. Didn't really get anywhere either. And what is that? It's got a refinery on it and some shield. Super 005. It just reminded me of uh, of Biffers. <laughs> Why can't I shoot this guy? Am I sort of like at the wrong height? There we go. So Biffer was playing this in the live stream and he made a snapshot, which you can do by clicking up here actually. Let's make a snapshot of our, of our one. Let's call it a Sumer Pro. <laughs> nah, just a Sumer. But that's the best one that I've made so far. Um, so we can send this invader to another player. Oh wow, let's do that. This requires Twitter to use this feature. No, I don't want to use Twitter in a game, thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, Biffa made this one. We had loads and loads of cool things just attached to a single um, vehicle. And it kind of feels like that's what this is. We've got solar power. By the way, is it me or has the screen gone darker and remained darker? It feels like it has. Um, we've also got a refinery, we've got, I think, a healing bubble. Thimble pad, that can stay back here. We've got a pound cannon, we'll definitely take that. A few extra wheels, and what's that? Is that a light? That's uh, a pad, we'll definitely take that. <laughs> and it's picking some things up now as well, and we'll take the extra blocks, we'll put those um, at the back. And yes, the distribution of this probably isn't the smartest, but we got some cool things. So let's head out into the desert and hopefully find um, a stronger one. And I'm pretty sure it just made the screen darker, so I'm going to restart the game here. Oh my god, look at that thing. <laughs> we got something to talk about, by the way. And it might take us a second here. <gasps> we should have come at that from the side. Actually, we've got all these shields, and pretty quickly it looks like it's in trouble. There we go. Let's back away. <laughs> oh, that was nuts. Oh, it's still not dead. No, it's still got its little cab intact. <laughs> and Oh, I love this. It's done for. It's done for. So what was left behind? It looks like some weapons, actually. By the way, I've been back to the base, and I've kind of upgraded our setup here a little bit. Uh, let's move you forward, and... Oh, no, actually, you can just sit like that. Oh, that reminds me. These things right here, they seem to be pretty useless. I want to move them to the back like that. That seems a lot better. Also, raise the pound cannon. Notice that problem. And we have an extra battery in here. We've got two of them now. Uh, but that's why we've got this solar power on this thing and a wireless receiver so that we can do this as we go around, which is really awesome. So we'll take those coil lasers, they look awesome. <laughs> and we've got another weapon right here, and some lights, and some wheels, and some and some actual lights. <laughs> the decent ones. Those ones aren't bright enough for me. And another one over there. So let's just drive up here a little bit. And it had a load of what I thought were pound cannons, or these things on it, but... Not many of them dropped, did they? So they're running out of room to attach things on. Now you can have that at the front. And I don't think we'll take the radar. I really don't need that. But what was it I dropped over here a second ago? The light. Yes, we'll put the light on the other side of this thing. And, uh, oh, it lost the wheel as well. So it can have a wheel back. 
And uh, while we're over here, we'll, uh, while it's daytime even, we'll get charged up and ready to move on again. Okay, I've spotted a baddie. He looks like a mean one. He's moving around fast. This is going to be tricky. We need to get him in our line of sight and then just like hammer down on him as much as we can. And it's going to be awkward because this guy's going to move around a lot. We just need to get a few hits in there and try and disable his wheels maybe. And there he is. Look, he's turning really fast. And that is kind of worrying. His, his missiles aren't really going anywhere near us though, are they? We need to get closer to this guy. Look at this. He is too fast. And it looks like he's attacking Sausage Dog. Leave Sausage Dog alone. No! He's just a sitting duck. There we go. Oh my god. Turn around, camera angle. Please. Please. <laughs> Where is it? It's over there somewhere. Oh, this camera angle is ridiculous. Right, we lost. it's lost some of its wheels. Oh my god. Come on. Turn. Turn. Leave Sausage Dog alone. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's the way. That's the way. You're stuck in our line of sight now. And we're healing up. You can't do damage to us. Oh, this is this is like really tricky to fight against. Feels like there's not much that I can do but try and hit it. There we go. And now he's down to just a few wheels. Okay. Uh, we're healing up some of the things that are dropping. Remember, we just got to pick some of them up. And a lot of them are disappearing, which is kind of annoying. Got to be careful not to hit them. Right. There we go. That's the way. Yeah. See you later. Uh, we want some of these things to survive. Can we heal them? Uh, right, so a new block we have now unlocked because we've attached it to ourselves. And what's this over here? I think that's a weapon. We'll take that. Actually, that's going to fire now as well, isn't it? As well as get healed. And another block over here. But did we get any of the wheels? Please tell me that a wheel got left behind. I can see one off in the distance. That's good. Right. Drop that over there. There's a couple of other bits and bobs here. Uh, but we're going to go attach the wheel to ourselves. That means we can then buy it in the shop. Excellent, we have unlocked some new stuff here. So, although that vehicle had like loads and loads of blocks, we ended up destroying a lot of them with our weapons. Um, we come away with a few of them, which means we can go and buy them at the shop. So not all is lost, that was actually pretty good, because now we've got some new technology. So, um, Sausage Dog looks like he took a battering. What I'm going to do is drop down the solar power, and now it's night time, that's not really going to help. Don't freak out, Sausage Dog, calm down. Calm down, it's okay. I'm here, we're going to heal up, look. He really needs some healing. Right, there we go. We can heal um, this guy with our portable battery. Teamwork is what I reckon you would call that. <laughs> uh, looks like it didn't really lose a lot. Actually, what's at the front here? That's just the cab, isn't it? I think the AI is gone. Yeah, we lost the AI. That's going to make bringing this all back a little bit difficult. Um, so something I overlooked there was that this guy is going to get caught up in the combat, isn't he? And he's going to need shielding. He's also an absolute pain to turn because I decided to make him... Uh, long and awkward. Maybe what we should have done is made him like a platform um, so there's a nice big area to put blocks on top of. Yeah, this is this is not working out. He's, he's trapped. <laughs> so I've made it back safe and sound. We've got Sausage Dog over here. I had to take turns uh, driving between the two to get them back over here. This guy's going to get a much needed redesign but we got what we set out for. That was to get some new block types and now when we open our little terminal over here uh, not text, that's the wrong thing. Blocks. We can click on Venture over here and you can see we've got the standard block. This is lighter, which a lot of you have been telling me. And we've got the Globe Trotter wheel. We've got the Hail Fire rifle. That thing is expensive. It must be good. <laughs> and uh, Magic Rocks appearing. And we already had this thing as well. So um, it's all going good. We got what we set out to do. We redesigned our harvester. We have beefed up our tech over here. Everything has gone really well um, this episode. But that is going to be it from me. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like. It does make a, a big difference here on the channel. Looks like we've got some enemies nearby. Got to watch out for them. <laughs> and anyway, that's going to be it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.